Hey, everyone, and welcome to the Love America and Hate Taxes podcast. I'm here with Don uh, Rasmussen, and we are here to go over the good, the bad, and the ugly of the recent vote for the Tax Relief for American Families and Workers Act. Oh, That's wow. a mouthful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, thanks. So, Don, um, big news came out yesterday. Um, they voted on this uh, act. I'm not going to say it again, but the, they voted on this act. And uh, what was the results of that? What happened? Yeah, so, you know, we were anticipating this. This started back in January, six months ago, Ryan, that the House passed at 357 to 70. So we've been, I want to say, uh, gradually waiting for or uh, patiently waiting for, because that's the last thing that was on our mind, but we've been waiting for the Senate to take a vote on this hero. So Chuck Schumer said that he would not bring it to the floor unless he felt like it would pass mm -hmm. for a floor vote. What was interesting yesterday, they voted 48 to 44 uh, against it. Um, I'm sorry, I take that back. 48 for 44 for it, mm -hmm. but they needed 60 to pass it. But what was interesting uh, in the New York Times, actually shortly after um, this all happened, there was something that I've never seen before in all the years in my life and or even just following this whole process. Schumer, uh, Chuck Schumer, who was for it, Ryan, actually voted against it. Hmm. So that kind of caught my curiosity. I actually called Jason, our tax attorney. I said, listen, <laughs> this is so fluky. I just can't imagine why. But the article that I read, um, and I dug a little bit deeper into it, it said, Mr. Schumer also, also ultimately voted against the bill, a decision that allows him to bring it back up for another vote. Hmm. That's so I thought, hmm, that is interesting. If because ultimately we have three weeks left in this congressional um, uh, session because uh, through September, there's three weeks, uh, mm -hmm. starts September 9th and goes through the end of the month, that both the House and, and the Senate are in session. And so the big thing with this bill is the uh, Republican senators have an issue with the child tax credit. Not the child tax credit in itself, but who qualifies for it. Mm -hmm. So. The look back issue was the, was the problem, or was the sticking point for Senator Crapo, who is the uh, Republican, uh, I don't say chair, but co chair of the Finance Committee in the Senate. And his issue is that it would allow somebody who could qualify for the credit based upon their previous year's tax return. And he had a big issue because he felt like it was going to disincentivize people to work. It may be true or not. I'm not here to debate that. But the issue is that that was a sticking point. So just looking at this from face value, and I've been given a lot of thought uh, since we found out this out about 3 o'clock yesterday afternoon, is the only theory that I have is that he needed to know who was on what side, Schumer, mm -hmm. um, and, the, and the Democrats. Because ultimately, if Schumer would have voted for it, we would have had 49, still not enough to get to 60. And then it but would have been dead. It would have been dead. Because if, if he would have voted for it, uh, pardon me, yeah, voted for it and would have lost, mm -hmm. it's dead. I mean, there's no revival. Mm -hmm. You have to start from square one and move it forward. But what this does, this opens up a window from now until September for the Senate Republicans and Democrats to do their horse trading. Yeah. And, that, and this is just, again, just the research I've done here, because what it says here it says, Bringing the bill, this is some research through uh, uh, chat GPT and some other sources, says bringing the bill back for another vote can also serve as a strategic move by the bill's proponents, allowing them to apply pressure, negotiate, or make deals to gain the necessary support. Listen, Chuck Schumer's been in there for 50,000 years, okay? Um, <laughs> the dinosaurs were around. <laughs> he is. Now, with all due respect, you know, he, he is a senator and he's got reelected all these years. But the point is, he's not ignorant. Mm -hmm. So when he voted against it yesterday, I believe is because there was probably some um, conversation on the Democrat side saying, listen, if we don't get the votes, we can go back and have a conversation. Because they want to get this passed. Because mm -hmm. ultimately, it's going to, and I'll just kind of be a parrot for Mr. Schumer yesterday, it's going to lift 500,000 children out of poverty because now that's all, again, politics, mm -hmm. um, and help another, I don't know, 160,000 children as well. But, you know, that's on the, that part of it. The R&D credit is what applies to most of our clients, and that is that it would, uh, would uh, eliminate the requirement for amortization for 22 and 23, okay? So that being said, 
Uh, I just want to get this out to you. If you're a client of Quartermaster Tax, you have really three options. Number one, as you know, I would say this is probably the most ideal uh, for everybody, and that is to wait until the end of September uh, for them to bring it back up for another vote with the amend amendments. Because now keep in mind, Ryan, mm -hmm. if they change anything, the amendments, or make any adjustment to this bill, they have to send it back to the House. Mm -hmm. Well, they couldn't do that yesterday because the House was leaving out. For, yeah. Yeah, for August. Mm -hmm. So they had no time to do it. But they will have time to do it in September. I will tell you that Jason Smith, who's the head of the uh, House Ways and Means Committee, who was one of the authors with Senator Wyden from the Democrats in the Senate, they want to get this passed because they're getting a lot of pressure from big corporations, small business owners, and then also the family organizations out there who see these kids in, in poverty. Yeah. And an extra three thousand dollars, you know, could feed them. You know, type mm -hmm. situation. That's that's to the extent. And for our clients, <clears throat> let's just kind of go back through really quick. What does this amortization schedule mean to them? Yeah. Like, how does this affect our clients who take R and D? Sure. So if you do uh, decide to go ahead and go ahead and amortize, what's going to happen is your expenses. So let's, for illustration's sake, let's say your qualified research expenses. That's what everything's based off. QREs. Your qualified research expenses are. Three hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Okay, so in twenty two, you can only deduct thirty thousand of that. Mm -hmm. So two hundred and seventy thousand, you have tax liability. Now mm -hmm. you have some credits to offset that, mm -hmm. but it's generally not going to be enough. Yeah. In twenty three, you get to go now to twenty percent of that figure, which would be in this case there's sixty thousand, and then you have a brand new year of expenses. So now you're probably around ninety thousand dollars of expenses, again. Is going to create unnecessary taxation. Mm -hmm. So that's that's really a big, a huge negative for clients to say, I want to subject myself to more taxes. Now, when you get to year three, that's yeah. what we call the break-even time. It's kind of like a roller coaster. You got to pay pay in, and then you kind of get the the yeah. downward slope. Yeah, you so. get you get through five years, and you're in the money. But who wants to endure the pain for that time? And that's that's the whole premise behind uh, this legislation was. I mean, there are business owners I know, I've spoke to numerous ones personally that don't have a choice, mm -hmm. who didn't have a choice, and they've already filed their taxes because there's some technologies, uh, particularly in, in software, that, you know, it was, it was a mandatory situation. So, you know, I had one, it was a 9-11 uh, software company that provided, you know, software to 9-11 services up in Virginia. Mm -hmm. They spent a million dollars to upgrade all their software, you know, for 9-11, you know, which is, uh, when I say 9-11, 9-1-1 no, services, not 9-11, 9-1-1 yeah. yeah. services. 9 but they upgraded everything, spent a million dollars. They can only deduct 100000 They had to pay taxes on 900000 which was $300,000 in taxes. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And, and who wants to, number one, who, who's got that set aside for that? Number one. Number two, you know, it, it, it. Actually, they have to go borrow the money, and yeah. I, Uncle Sam wants his money. You know? Borrow and, money to pay your taxes. Yeah, what well, a sad, sad situation. So that's that's the issue with the amortization. Now, you know, uh, for our clients who are watching here, there are some solutions uh, that that are available that are going to require some additional work, additional paperwork. Mm -hmm. Okay, so not all. So I just want to let know whoever, whoever's watching this here, if you are on a cash basis on an accounting standpoint, if you're under $10 million of, of gross collections, you can be a cash basis. So one of the ways that can assist in uh, mitigating some of this pain is to uh, convert to an accrual basis. Now, well, if you do those, Ryan, mm -hmm. it's a three-year commitment. Okay. Okay. Now, so that just keep that in mind, that that, that, that would mitigate some. But here's the problem. If, let's say they say, okay, let's go ahead and do that. Or even the amortization. They're ultimately, well, I take that back on the amortization, but on the on the on the changeover, if they change over to uh, accrual, they're a three-year commitment. If they change their law in September and you've done this in August, you cannot undo it. You're stuck. You're stuck for three years. So I'm um, really that's why we've asked uh, our, our clients specifically to hold tight. And that's why I'm going to say that again. You know, we've already waited six months, you know, so far, waiting un until they get through it in September. That's another month from now. Uh, that would be the ideal situation. That way there, there's not a bunch of unnecessary um, hoops to jump through. And like I said, I would not even have this suggestion if Mr. Schumer had not voted against it yesterday. Mm -hmm. Because if he voted it, like we said, it would have been dead. 
you know, ultimately we'd have to wait till next year, which mm -hmm. a lot of y'all may or may not be aware of. It's in the news quite a bit, but the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act expire next year. And so in 2025, they, they sunset. So what happens is now uh, the Congress is already starting to work on this. The House Ways and Means Committee uh, is starting to work on legislation to uh, revive those because what happens is there's a lot of benefits, you know, and also this current code has uh, benefits for depreciation, accelerated depreciation, and some other things for business owners. Don't want to go deep into that, but next year, there's a lot of stuff that's going to expire. So, you know, they're going to have to address the tax issues, all of them, next year. So if for some reason they don't bring it to, to mm -hmm. uh, up front, it's going to happen next year. Yeah. For sure, they don't have a choice. And let's talk about one more mm -hmm. that might apply to our clients. So, <clears throat> excuse me, if, depending on their corporate structure, mm -hmm. Um, uh, oh. there's some special things that they can, if you're a certain type of corporate structure, you yeah. want to walk through that, that can help offset the amortization. Yeah. So bit. let's say for example, so we work with a lot of professionals and, and we'll just use one as a, an example, uh, you know, your dad's a chiropractor. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so, uh, if you're a, uh, the predominant provider in your practice, uh, meaning that most of your time is spent in qualified activities and, and we could let you know what that looks like, then you're, and you're a sole proprietor or a partnership. The law says that we do not have to include your wages, okay, the qualified expenses there, mm -hmm. in the amortization. So let, let's, again, go back to my, my example before, $300,000. Let's say I'm, I'm the doctor, and my qualified research expenses on me personally um, are about 200 of that, okay? That means I only have to amortize 100000 now that's a lot easier. Mm -hmm. The, the 200000 doesn't even count against it. So if you're a sole proprietor Schedule C filer or a partnership, this only applies to you. If you're an S corporation or C corporation, this does not apply. Yep. Good. So, so let's just kind of recap. So, so right now, basically, with this no vote and with Schumer basically voting against the very bill that he brought up to the floor, <laughs> we want to, we want to it's, it's given a little hope. So the good, the bad, the ugly out of this, the bad, they didn't vote it in. Yep. The ugly is that they're going to use this probably for some horse trading down the road. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the good is that the bill is not dead. Right. That, that we have the ability, or, the, or we don't, but the Congress has the ability to bring it back up to the floor, to vote on it again, and possibly pass this sometime, hopefully in September. Yes. Um, so that's kind of where, you know, everybody's at. And because it's such a short time frame, mm -hmm. you know, there's the old adage of, um, don't trade what you want most for what you want in the moment. So for the R&D <laughs> clients, for the ones who are waiting to take R&D, we've, we've been waiting on this for a while now. There's another month. Um, it's worth the wait rather than having to take the risk ultimately to amortize your credits or to even have to switch over to an accrual basis, things like that. So, um, you know, wait. That would be our professional advice is just to yeah. wait in the meantime for another 30 days, uh, 30 to 45 days or so see what this happens, and then we can walk through some other scenarios a little bit later. Absolutely, and we'll keep you informed. You know, once they're out on August, on their, what they call summer break, I guess, August break, um, but there's a lot of stuff that happens during these breaks. Doesn't mean that they went home and, you know, kicked up their feet. Now, there's some who will go back and, you know, work with their constituents, prepare for the election coming up, but the reality is there's going to be some conversations uh, that are going to go on about how to get this passed. Um, so, you know, that being said, I would encourage everybody, Contact your senator. Well, now, uh, here a couple days ago, we shipped out an email. Uh, and if you, if you didn't get it, let us know. We, we have the list of all the phone numbers uh, for the senators in the United States. Uh, we contact your, I would encourage you to contact your senator. Let them know as a constituent of their state that you are asking them to correct this bill so it will pass and get it passed. Because as a business owner, you pay taxes. You don't need to un unnecessarily overpay on taxes. And this bill, as uh, if it doesn't get passed, is exactly it's punishing you as a business owner. And the elections are coming up, so just remember that. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, if you have children and, and you're eligible for the child tax credit, it's it's punishing you as well. So that's that's the only thing I would say is that you know I love that saying. What was that again? Did you just say? Don't sacrifice what you want most for what you want in the moment. Yes. So. We are an instant society. We love our microwaves. We don't like to wait. Unfortunately, uh, it would be less beneficial for you if you do, don't wait and go ahead and, and, and execute now as compared to waiting. Now, there's no guarantees. Mm -hmm. I can't guarantee you that they are going to bring it back up. But knowing what we found out yesterday is that Mr. Schumer voted against it, 
it has opened up that window of opportunity for September to be a fix. If it doesn't happen in September, it's not going to happen until next year. So, yeah, awesome. Well, um, any other anything no. else to add? Before? No, the only thing I was going to say is that you know we have changed the name of our podcast from Quartermaster Podcast to the Love America Hate Taxes. This is something that we yeah Ryan's got his on. That was our first version. This is our second version. But we have these shirts that if you uh, would like one, uh, just uh, let us know. Uh, make sure you subscribe to our podcast and of course uh, like it and share it with us.